Hello, hello, Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour. Thank you once again for being here. We are here with our good friend, Assemblyman Lackey, and we are talking about the challenges in the insurance industry right now. Right before the break, we were talking about fairness, and we were talking about what's fair to one might not be fair to somebody else, and by the same notion that there are different industry groups, some you could consider pro-industry, some pro-consumer, and the stories they're telling about where we actually are can be very different. What, what are you seeing with those two different sets of sources of information? Well, again, you, in order for us to have what we deserve to have here, it's got to make sense. It's got to pencil out, as they say. And what has happened, and the reason why a lot of the companies have left here, it isn't that they don't want to make money. They don't think they can. The fact is they don't think they can survive. So that's why they're leaving. And it's, it's creating less competition, which means higher prices. And so... You can't really blame somebody for wanting to uh, leave where they feel like they can't be successful. And so we have these realistic uh, circumstances. And so what happens is when you have people mischaracterizing the problem and, and not being completely forthright and honest about what we're facing. And I feel like we've had some of that going on to try to pacify one force versus another force so that we can uh, make it look like everything's going to be okay. When some, I will tell you that it's a, a habit-forming circumstance to procrastinate dealing with issues until it actually gets to the point where you can procrastinate it no more. And I think we're right there. Um, we got to start being honest with each other and we got to start facing reality in order to uh, have this kind of reasonable response. I think that it's a very good point that you know, Toyota makes cars so they can sell them and make money. And insurance companies create products and sell insurance so they can make money. The fact that they're leaving California, the fact that they're not writing new policies, there really is only one reason they could possibly be doing that. And to your point, because they're not able to do it successfully. They're That's not right. able to have a profit on it. What I find interesting, and I'd love your take, is current law says that insurance premiums must be adequate, but not excessive. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? It's, the, it's, it's very political. Actually, it's actually on the, it's very California. <laughs> let's be honest, right? It's very California. It's, it's a great ideal, but what we're, what we're finding now is we're in a situation where apparently those two things under our current guidelines and the current regulations mm -hmm. aren't possible. Do you think that we should be trying to change the goal or should we be trying to change the regulations to try and obtain that same goal of, of, you know, of uh, adequate but not excessive? Well, I think what we first off have to do is just be honest with the problem, right? And I think you clearly identified what it is. And uh, when we have these words that can be distracting, that's part of our problem, right? So we need to push that aside and we need to roll up our sleeves, as they say, and get to work. And it's not going to be comfortable. It's, and both sides are going to have some kind of discomfort. There, there's going to have to be some risk taken here. And there's also going to have to be some increased costs because uh, they're both going to suffer. And we have a tendency to try to uh, keep that from happening. And we, it, it's time. It's time for us both to face that uh, we've got to do some work that's not going to make anybody happy. But it's got to be sustainable. It's got to be to where the people who are providing the policy can still make a profit. Profit is not evil. Profit is the only way people stay afloat. And so that's, that degree of honesty doesn't exist, in my opinion. And that's we've got to get to that point. And so I'm here to try to help that happen. Uh, and it's not going to be popular. What are you hearing from people in this building when the topic of insurance comes up, because I've talked to probably half a dozen in the last few days and everyone is well aware. It's on their radar. Mm -hmm. Their phones are ringing. They're getting the emails. They're hearing about this. How do you, how are people that are in a position of power like yourself and that are in a position to potentially change some of these regulations or support others that the department of insurance might put forth? What is, what is the general consensus among your peers? Hesitancy. Right? No one really knows which way to which way to lean. Right? And because there's trust that's at, at stake here. And they don't want to be mistrusted, right? And and their constituents have been very, very loud on what they expect. And all they want is to be able to afford and have 
insurance com uh, coverage, that's not an unreasonable request. But uh, how we get to what's reasonable, that's going to be questionable. But uh, we've got to start doing something because the longer we wait, the worse it's going to get. That's the subjective part, right? What is, what is reasonable? That is. What do you think happens in, an, in a situation where, let's assume that the regulations go forward, competition comes back to California, things are happening. But at the same time, the prices have increased because, let's face it, today's exposures are not what they were five years ago, seven years ago. So That's the right. premiums are not going to look that way either. How do you think your phone is going to react with people calling in if there is competition and these regulations have gone into place and their premiums are still higher than they were before? They're not going to be happy, but uh, there's going to have to be some kind of discomfort that we're going to have to be able to endure in order to arrive at a real solution. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get uh, to be even less manageable than it is now. It'll just worsen. It's just going to get worse. The, more we, the longer we put it off, the worse it's going to be. The California Fair Plan, which, as, as you know, was created to be the organization of last resort to get basic fire insurance until you can find something better, is now writing almost half of the business that they're writing is in the middle of the cities. It's not real. It's, it's, it's just being written because there is no other place to go. Mm -hmm. And people are, are paying more money for less coverage. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they'll be willing to spend that same money for a normal homeowner's policy, if the regulations permit that, or is that still going to be considered a net loss if they can't pay less? It's a case-by-case case thing, right? It depends on where you live. It depends on, on your personal circumstances. There's not a one-size-fits-all approach to insurance, right? It, because those variables are very real. And risk is also very real. And that's the industry, right? The industry bases it's, itself on risk. And uh, that's a realistic, uh, manageable circumstance. And a lot of people who live in very high-risk areas um, give that very little thought. And I would just say that, right? I mean, I, I live in a, a very rural area. Um, I don't live in a forest area, but I live in the desert, and I've had to evacuate my home twice. So risk is real. And I don't know that there's been that many people that can say they've had to evacuate their home twice. So there's some real risk there. I'd I want to talk about that a little bit more when we come back, because I think the idea that you're living in an environment where you've personally had to deal with that, you can speak a lot more honestly about the difference in risk levels between one risk, one place and another. Let's talk about that as soon as we come back. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.